before we jump in and create our first project, I thought it'd be helpful to talk a little bit about what projects encompass. So let's go ahead and jump in and talk about what projects can encompass. The very first thing to understand is that they organize your APIs and your credentials. What you'll end up doing is you'll add APIs to a project and then apply credentials to them. And as a system progresses and grows larger, even Google will create its own credentials and API references inside of your project as you ask for certain resources. It's good to understand that these organizations can be very small or very large, and there's no one size that fits all. In fact, you'll find that both can come into play. You may even want to create small sub-projects and one larger project that interacts with all of those sub-projects depending on your specific needs. And regardless of what you're doing, whether or not you're just provisioning a resource or using an API, everything uses APIs in the background, so you'll need to make sure that the project has all the access needed for all of the APIs. For instance, you can't provision a server without having the server provisioning AI APIs assigned to you. Speaking of provisioning resources, all provisioned resources sit underneath a project. So if you create a server, it sits underneath the project organizational structure. Some of the provisioned resources that we'll be looking at are compute resources such as a virtual machine or some kind of networking layer where those virtual machines sit in. Data resources such as Cloud SQL or Cloud Data Store. These are the SQL and NoSQL options inside of Google Cloud. Additionally, there's some other things like Cloud Spanner and Bigtable which are a little bit larger tools that encompass multi-terabyte functions. Storage resources, such as a bucket that is used to retain files. Various AI resources, such as those used to translate images into JOSN packets or transcribe audio into text. And of course, no system would be complete without security to manage all of the various resources underneath it. And of course, you're gonna find that projects are required for just about everything. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and get started and create our first project and take a quick look around at some of the various areas underneath a project that we can work. Okay, so here I've logged into Google for the very first time. Actually, it's not my first time, but if it's your first time, you will likely be coming to a different page than I'm already on. And this is because Google remembers wherever you were last at in the console. So, to make sure that we're looking at the same thing, we'll always start by navigating to the same area. And if this is your first time, you may be very well presented with a welcome screen that helps you get started creating your project for the very first time. If not, go ahead and navigate to the API section. You can do this by using the search box up at the side and just typing API. You'll notice that it lists everything that is associated with API even a project that I've already created called API Project. In this case, we're looking for something called APIs and Services. Go ahead and locate it and click on that. That's going to bring you to a screen that looks somewhat like this. However, you're likely not going to have any metrics. If you're using an existing account to go through this course, I would be very careful about working inside of this account and make sure that you create a separate project so that you can work from scratch. If you're working in an existing project, you may interrupt operations that are already underway. Once you're in here, let's go ahead and create a project so that we can navigate around. Most navigation will be disabled unless you have a project selected. So to do that, we can look up here at the project dropdown. You'll notice that I already have several projects. For instance, here's the project I created when my organization was started, gregharrington.com. This is a default project that is created called an organization. So projects can belong to organizations, which is an important concept to understand, but not really for the basics. That's more of an advanced thing when you start doing project or organization to organization sharing or moving a project from one organization to another. Here you can see I have several projects. I have one called My First Project, I also have something called test project blah 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 and TBC test project. They all have a very unique ID and these IDs must be unique in the entire world. For instance, if you tried to create TBC test project, you would get an error 
only I can have that ID because I've already created it with my account. If you don't have a project already that you want to start with, go ahead and click New Project, and that will take you to this screen. So in this case, I'm going to name the project eduonics-greg harrington-proj. I would have said project, but that exceeds the maximum length of the project name. And then I'm going to go ahead and click Create. Now, notice that it goes ahead and takes me back to my primary page where it shows me a notification that it's creating the project actively. And now it's done. So if I go ahead and click on this, it'll actually take me straight into the project to the project information dashboard. This is actually one of my favorite pages. It's a quick dashboard that gives you a heads up on your project and will let you view things that are going on underneath this project. As you can see right now, for the billing period, we have no charges yet. Under APIs, nothing's really going on. And the same could be said about everything else. So as we go through the project, we're going to start seeing this page come to life. So remember before when we said all APIs and resources are located underneath a project? Remember when I logged in, I had some API data on the screen and now there is none. And that's because I was in a different project. So if I switch between projects, we can see the information get populated. So for instance, in this test project, I have a compute engine instance spun up, which is a virtual machine. If you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. We'll be getting to that very shortly. However, what is important to understand is that I have a compute engine resource and I've been using the APIs over there. So here you can see API traffic and it's gone ahead and put this bit of the dashboard here so that I can quickly monitor this. In fact, I never set this up myself. It automatically did this for me. The other thing that I found it useful to understand is that there's an API section and a Google Cloud Platform section. They act a little bit differently and sometimes when you click on buttons to go between them, they don't always work. So if you ever have trouble navigating between the two, under the navigation menu, you can go down here to Google Cloud Platform anytime you need to. In fact, let's go ahead and take a look underneath the covers a little bit. Here we'll find a screen that we were just looking at, except now it says Google Cloud Platform up here, meaning that we can now go to our Google Cloud Platform resources, such as Compute Engine, and take a look at what's going on. So by clicking onto this, you can see that I have a test instance and we can very easily work on this instance by clicking connect. And that will automatically browser side create an SSH terminal. Again, if this doesn't make a lot of sense, no worries, we'll be getting into VMs very shortly. So for now, I'm just going to go ahead and close this down. So if we go up here to the navigation menu, you'll find that the Google Cloud Platform is quite large. In fact, they've had to organize it several times over the years in different ways. So you'll find your way around to all of the various information and areas that you'll need over here on the left. So when we're talking about storage, you're gonna come down here, data store, big table, under compute, there's several options such as Kubernetes and App Engine, which we'll be getting into in this course as well. So if you're ever looking for something, it's over here, but I also very much like this search tool. For instance, we could look for Kubernetes up here. And before I finish even typing it, here we are. This screen is very common when you go to a service for the first time. Notice that in this test project, I have not yet enabled the Kubernetes Engine API, and it's being enabled right now. This screen is very common when you go to a service for the first time. Notice that in this test project, I have not yet enabled the Kubernetes Engine API, and it's being enabled right now. So if I wanted to create a Kubernetes cluster right now, I would simply click Create Cluster. Now, this is all worked underneath the test project. So if we were to go back to the test project's API section, we would find that the Kubernetes engine is now available underneath our project. And we can see that by going back to the API section of our system. And now notice that the Kubernetes engine API is down here. And it wasn't before. You'll just have to take my word on this since I didn't show it to you. 
but you're going to find that the Google Cloud Platform often does its own provisioning of securities, APIs, and services. It's often going to prompt you as well to confirm that you want to allow for certain types of security permissions to be enacted. Now, for instance, if you wanted to add a library on your own, you could just go ahead and go over to the library and do a search for anything you want. For instance, let's go ahead and add Google Maps to our project. Once you've clicked on the API, you'll simply need to click Enable, and it'll just be a matter of seconds before you're actually able to use it. Sometimes it can take up to a couple of minutes, but that's pretty rare. From this point forward, I'll be able to use Google Maps with this project. It's that simple. And in fact, if you want to go ahead and clean it up a little bit, you can always disable these things as well. There's a disable button at the top of each of the services that you've already enabled. So that's it. It's pretty easy. You can navigate around and even start to pin items here that you use more often. As you come up with multiple projects, it's easy to switch between them by just clicking on the project dropdown at the top and then switching to the project you want. Notice that all of the information instantly changed and I was at the same place inside of the Google Cloud platform just now with a different project.